Intel recently launched their new Core Ultra chips for desktops. And in this video, we're not gonna be taking a look at CPU performance. Instead, we're gonna be taking a look at iGPU performance because with these new Arrow Lake S CPUs, we've actually got a new iGPU with four XE cores. It'll clock up to 2000 megahertz. And I really wanted to see if we could game on this iGPU. Of course, there's not a lot of people who are gonna run out and buy one of these new Core Ultra chips specifically for the iGPU. But either way, I still think we're gonna be able to game on these integrated graphics. And with this setup here, I'm using the new ASRock Nova Wi-Fi motherboard. It's a Z890. And installed in this motherboard, I've got the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K, paired up with 32 gigabytes of Viper DDR5 RAM running at 7,000 megahertz running in dual channel. Now I've got a lot to go over here, and before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys, and I have been using this site for quite some time when it comes to buying Windows 10 and Windows 11 keys. Over on Microsoft's site right now, you can see Windows 11 Pro is $199, and if you're building a low-cost budget gaming PC, adding an extra $200 on top just isn't going to work out for a lot of people. But luckily, over at URCD Key, you can pick up a Windows 11 Pro OEM key for as little as $23 by using code ETA. So what we're going to do here is add it to our cart. We'll use code ETA. Brought this down to $22.88. We'll submit our order. Once payment is complete, they're gonna email you the code or you can go to your user profile on the site, copy the code. Now we can head over to the PC we wanna activate. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're gonna to go to activation settings. It's gonna tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just gonna paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. And remember, code ETA will give you 25% off other Microsoft products over on their website. So if you want to go with Office 2019, 2016 Pro, or if you just want to save a little more money and not pick up Windows 11, you can go with Windows 10 Pro, and that code is going to bring this down to $17. You're going to go through the same process, copy that code over, activate your PC. But yeah, like I mentioned, I've been using this site for a while. And whenever I build these PCs, I need to activate Windows. I usually pick up a key over here. Going with Windows 11 Pro, and it used to be Windows 10, but now we're up to this version. So if you're looking for cheap Windows keys for your next PC build, don't miss out on URCD Keys Halloween sale. Again, using code ETA will get you 25% off. So getting right down to it, initially when Intel announced the new Core Ultra desktop CPUs, I was really hoping that we'd get an XE2 based iGPU. But unfortunately, with this new Intel graphics, that's what they're calling it even over on their website, we've got four XE cores up to 2000 megahertz. And with this system here, like I mentioned, I've got 7,000 megahertz dual channel DDR5. Now, of course, we've got that NPU, and I've actually tried to disable the NPU just to see if we could get a bump at performance on the GPU. A couple things here and there, there's not much we can do. There is some overclocking we can do with this, but from the BIOS that I'm on right now with this ASRock Nova, I can only go up 100 megahertz. So I'm just gonna keep it stock at 2000. Checking out hardware info, uh, Aero Lake S, integrated graphics, and if I go to our video adapter, not a lot of information right now, and it's still a bit early for you know these third-party software vendors to kind of get more information on what we're working with here. But as you can see, maximum clock up to 2,000. RAM is running at 7,000 right now. And the last thing I wanted to do here was actually just run this Furmark. Up in the top left-hand corner, we've got Afterburner. You can see our iGPU clock up to 2000 megahertz. And from what I can gather right now, this iGPU with those four XE cores can pull around 28 to 30 watts in total. I mean, it's kind of locked down at that 2000 megahertz. And of course, we could get more out of it overclocking a bit. But like I mentioned, we can only go up 100 megahertz with it. I think the only way to really gain some more performance is faster RAM. And we're already working with 7,000 megahertz here, but that's, some, but that's something I'm always interested in with these iGPUs. I just kind of wanted to know what kind of power they can pull all by themselves. And it does look 28 to 30 watts here with this new Intel GPU in Arrow Lake. I also ran a few benchmarks on this iGPU. And the first one we have here is Geekbench 6 OpenCL. 
20,244. And if we go over to their browser, we can see that this is actually coming just a bit behind a GTX 1050 Ti. No, that's not a top of the line GPU whatsoever. Definitely getting really dated. But seeing, you know, on these desktop CPUs from Intel having graphics like this is definitely an upgrade from their older UHD graphics. Still not on par with their mobile counterparts, especially new Meteor Lake chips with those XE2 cores. Those things are really great. Or even the Radeon 780M from AMD. I also ran 3D Mark Night Raid. We got a 26,571. And the last one I did here was Time Spy, just to kind of get an idea. 2,631. This iGPU isn't going to win any benchmark awards, but I want to get into some real-world gaming because it does perform better than it looks on paper. And the first one we have here is Doom Eternal 1080p medium with dynamic scaling turned on. I've actually got it set to 90 FPS, and this is a pretty playable experience, but this game is very well optimized. I mean, it uses the Vulcan back end. I've got Afterburner in the top left-hand corner. I've also got the in-game metrics up in the top right-hand corner. And with some resolution scale, this does run over 60 FPS. By the end of this, I had an average of 68. Moving over to one of my favorite games, OG Skyrim. It's not the special edition or anything like that. We're at 1080 medium. This is running at a pretty steady 60. Every once in a while, you'll see it dip down to around 59. But overall, this whole CPU with the GPU and everything going is only pulling up to around 35 watts. Here's Ratchet & Clank, Rift Apart, 1080p, medium, and originally I went in this using XESS set to performance. We were seeing an average of around 42 FPS, but as soon as I enabled the FSR 3.1 frame gen that we have in the game now, we're over 60. I was pretty impressed here, and I know we are using frame generation, but if you're working with a low-end iGPU or a low-end graphics card in general, these are technologies that we can use to get better performance. Built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this is one I always like to test with these Intel iGPUs. We've really been trying to hit up medium 1080 over 60 with it. I do have XESS set to performance, and we only got an average of 40, and I kind of knew this would be the case given that we've only got four XE cores. Fallout 4, 1080, medium, not bad at all. Pulling a maximum of 50 watts in total. That's the uh, CPU and the iGPU pulling as much as it needs for this game to run it at 60. Now this is one of those games with the newer update that basically on all iGPUs in this area here, it dips on down but then comes right back up. Here's Overwatch 2, and this is probably the most impressive thing that I saw out of this iGPU so far. 1080 with a medium-low mix, and I probably should have just went in here at medium, seeing what we're doing here. Now, this is a very well-optimized game, just like a lot of the other ones we tested, and I purposely chose these games because I know what we're working with. It's a low-end iGPU. We're not going to play God of War Ragnarok at 4K on this system, but there are games that are playable, as you can see here. I mean, we're getting over 120 FPS with Overwatch 2 on this iGPU. Here's Spider-Man Remastered, 1080, medium, and anytime we can hit up frame gen with these iGPUs, we're definitely going to need it. Without frame gen, 1080 medium XESS set to performance, we're in the low 40s with it. This shoots way up. In fact, I had an average of 86 FPS with this game at 1080 medium. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077, and there's a few different methods I want to go with here. Right now, we're at 1080p low settings with XESS set to performance. It's actually better than I thought it would be with those four XE cores. I figured we'd be way under 40 FPS, getting an average of around 42 with it. 
but we can get more out of it. Now, something like this, we could drop the resolution down. So from the settings, we're gonna take it down to 900p, keeping it at that low preset with XESS set to performance. Let's see what this does. Okay, yeah, I didn't think it was gonna jump up that far and it really didn't. So we're now, I mean, basically high 50s with it and it's dropping under 60. We're not gonna get a steady 60 at 900p low. We could go in and take all of the settings down to the lowest of the low, but we've got one other thing that we can do here from the Recently, setting. CD Projekt Red updated Cyberpunk 2077 with FSR 3 and FSR 3 frame generation. And in order to enable this, we do have to restart the game but we're gonna be sticking at 900p low with frame gen on. And it actually didn't help as much as I thought it would. Now don't get me wrong, I mean, we're over 60, seeing an average of around 68 FPS now, but I thought it would be a bit more here. But yeah, again, I mean, it's a low-end iGPU. They didn't go all out with this, and that's something I've been wanting to see from Intel for a while. I really do wish that this generation had those XE2 cores, at least eight XE2 cores, like their Meteor Lake mobile chips. But unfortunately, even at the top of the line here, they went with only four XE cores. This new iGPU isn't a game changer for these Intel desktop chips, but it is a step in the right direction. I mean, it's more powerful than the older UHD graphics, and, you know, it usually is. They bump it up just a bit here and there, but again, I really do wish they would have added those XE2 cores. And I know not a lot of people are going to pick up the 285K and just run right off the iGPU. You're definitely going to pair a pretty powerful GPU up with this, but on their lower-end chips, like their Core Ultra 5 chips, if we had something to put out a little more power like the 140V iGPU and the Meteor Lake chips, then I think it would be much more appealing to people out there to pick something like this up and then later on down the road they could upgrade their GPU. So in the end, yeah, you could game on these new Intel graphics, but would it be worth picking something like this up specifically for gaming? Definitely not. But, you know, in a pinch, you could get by with it at those lower resolutions. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I was really interested to see what we could do with this. And it is much better than I thought it would be. But again, it's not a game changer. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this new CPU, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.